this is the vCloud Director web interface and we are deleting a vApp that has no VMs inside it and we're going to recreate that from scratch. This is the client connection so this is what the organization would see if they were connecting into their own uh, vCloud Director interface. So we click the plus button, you choose a template for your VMs from the public catalog or the organization catalog if one is available. Once you name the VAP, you have to fill in your first VM that's going to fit into that VAP and choose a network that it's going to connect to. In this case it's automatically going to get an IP address. This is the administrator side so you can see the different data stores that are given to the organization. And now it will go off and create the VAP and directly after that create the VM. So you can see in vCenter server the VM is being, the template is being copied to create a new VM. So everything you do in vCloud Director um, causes something to happen in vCenter server. So that's the new VM inside the vApp and it's almost done. Okay, and that should be it finished now. So now we do a refresh and we see that it's there and it's powered off so now we can configure it. So we want to check that all the configurations are correct. Now in the hardware we want, need to change the amount of memory and the number of CPUs because the template was built with two CPUs and four gigs of RAM so we're customizing it to be 8 CPUs, 16 gigs of RAM. Um, it automatically is going to change the SID so that's going to run sysprep after it boots and we're specifying a password for the administrator reserving uh, the 16 gigs of RAM that it has so that it uses all of it and it doesn't have to use a swap file um, on the ESX server it actually has it reserved inside its, its VM space so it's reconfiguring in vCenter server and it's ready and now we power it on. And you can see from the administrator view that the available LUN was used to house the VM files. You need to make sure that um, only the available LUN um, for the VM should be um, enabled. All other LUNs should be disabled or should not have enough space to fit the, the new VM. So it's up. It'll take a few minutes to another reboot and then uh, sysprep customization. Yeah, you can see the networking. Now, if there are more VMs within the VAP, you'll see all of them and uh, connecting to that network. And as you can see there, an IP address was automatically allocated from a pool that was decided before. So it's finalizing the installation and now it's doing the sysprep which will configure the correct IP address and all the other options that we set and give it a new SID so it will come up as a new machine.
And there we go, your VM is up and ready to use. Thank you.